Namaskar. Dear learners, today we are going to learn about living cultures of India. The objective of this session is to define and understand the living culture of India, provide you details on the different aspects of living culture. Now what is cultural heritage? Culture is vital for the development of any society. The power of culture and heritage cannot be underestimated as it gives an identity to a community, region or country. There are things that create a certain emotion within us or because they make us feel as though we belong to something, a country, a tradition, a way of life. They might be objects that can be held and buildings that can be explored or songs that can be sung and stories that can be told. Whatever shape they take, these things form part of a heritage. The term cultural heritage does not end at monuments and collections of objects. It also includes traditions or living expressions inherited from our ancestors and passed on to our descendants such as oral traditions, performing arts, social practices, rituals, festive events, knowledge and practices concerning nature and the universe or the knowledge and skills to produce traditional crafts. Cultural heritage is an expression of the ways of living developed by a community and passed on from generation to generation including customs, practices, places, objects, artistic expressions and values. The cultural heritage is often expressed as either intangible or tangible cultural heritage. This is defined by ICOMOS in 2002. Categories of cultural heritage. The term cultural heritage encompasses several main categories of heritage. Cultural heritage, it includes tangible cultural heritage, that is movable cultural heritage, paintings, cultures, coins, manuscripts, immovable cultural heritage, monuments, archaeological sites and so on, underwater cultural heritage like shipwrecks, underwater ruins and cities. Second is intangible cultural heritage. It includes oral traditions, performing arts, rituals. Natural heritage, it includes natural sites with cultural aspects such as cultural landscapes, physical, biological or geological formation. Heritage in the event of armed forces is another category. Now let us learn about intangible cultural heritage which is also termed as living heritage and also living culture. Intangible cultural heritage refers to the practices, representations, expressions, knowledge and skills handed down from generation to generation. This heritage provides communities with a sense of identity and is continuously recreated in response to their environment. It is called intangible because its existence and recognition depend mainly on the human will which is immaterial and is transmitted by imitation and living experience. Intangible cultural heritage is also known as living heritage or living culture. UNESCO's 2003 convention for the safeguarding of the intangible cultural heritage proposes five broad domains in which intangible cultural heritage is manifested. One, oral traditions and expressions including language as a vehicle of the intangible cultural heritage. Second, performing arts. Third, social practices, rituals and festive events. Fourth, knowledge and practices concerning nature and the universe. And last, traditional craftsmanship. 
Now let us learn about each one of them in detail. One that is oral traditions and expressions. It includes an enormous variety of spoken forms including proverbs, riddles, tales, nursery rhymes, legends, myths, epic songs and poems, prayers, chants, dramatic performances and more. Oral traditions and expressions are used to pass on knowledge, cultural and social values and collective memory. They play a crucial part in keeping cultures alive. Some types of oral expressions are common and can be used by entire communities while others are limited to particular social groups, only men or women, perhaps or only the elderly. In many societies, performing oral traditions is a highly specialized occupation and the community holds professional performers in the highest regard as guardians of collective memory. The cultural diversity in India can be seen in its style of storytelling, while some narrates, others employ props like puppets, masks and even musical instruments. There are some that are told through the medium of dance and music. Here are some of the storytelling traditions of India. Dastan Goi, it is a mix of two Persian words, Dastan meaning story and Goi meaning telling. A popular source of entertainment in Central Asian countries and Iran. This form of storytelling received patronage in the Deccan region in South India in 16th century. It is said that during the Mughal era, Emperor Akbar was reputed to have been an expert Dastan Go and popularized this art form. This form of storytelling involves telling tales of adventure, magic and warfare in Urdu. Another form of storytelling in India is Yakshagan. This form of storytelling emerged from the Bhakti movement in South India between the 7th and 10th century. Performed in a dance drama style, it blends together classical and folk dance with dialogues. Mostly, the stories are inspired from the Purans, Ramayana and Mahabharat. The performance involves a Bhagwat who acts as a storyteller, introducing the story to the audience first. He is the key in the entire performance as he is responsible for holding the story together. Another form, Hari Katha. This is a form of Hindu religious discourse in which the storyteller explores a religious theme usually based on the life of a saint or a story from an Indian epic. It comprises of storytelling, music, drama, dance, poetry and philosophy having its roots in South India, especially in villages of Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu, it aims to imbue truth and righteousness in the minds of people and sow the seeds of devotion in them. The subject for the story can be from any Hindu religious theme. While the narration comprises numerous subplots and anecdotes which are used to emphasize various aspects of the main story, the main storyteller is usually assisted by one or more co-singers who elaborate the songs and Radangam accompanist. Kavad. Kavad uh, Bachna, an oral tradition of storytelling is still alive in Rajasthan, where stories from the epics Mahabharat and Ramayan are told along with stories from the Purans, caste genealogies and stories from the folk tradition. The experience of audiovisual as the telling is accompanied by taking the listener on a visual journey made possible by Kavad Shrine. The Kavad is a portable wooden temple shrine that has visual narratives on its multiple panels that are hinged together. The Kavadiyas Bhat are the itinerant storytellers of the Kavad tradition who live around the Jodhpur, Nagore and Kishangarh districts of Rajasthan. Another form of 
uh, intangible uh, cultural heritage is the performing arts. The performing arts range from vocal and instrumental music, dance and theatre, sung verses and beyond. Music is perhaps the most universal of the performing arts and is found in every society, most often as an integral part of other performing art forms and other domains of intangible cultural heritage, including rituals, festive events or oral traditions. Dance though very complex, may be described simply as ordered bodily movements, usually performed to music. Apart from its physical aspect, the rhythmic movements, steps and gestures of dance often express a sentiment or a mood or illustrate a specific event or daily act. Traditional theatre performances usually combine acting, singing, dance and music, dialogue, narration, or recitation but may also include puppetry. The instruments, objects, artifacts and spaces associated with cultural expressions and practices are all included in the definition of intangible cultural heritage. In the performing arts, this also includes musical instruments, masks, costumes and other body decorations used in dance and scenery and prop theatre. Third is social practices, rituals and festive events. Social practices, rituals and festive events are habitual activities that structure the lives of communities and groups and that are shared by and relevant to many of their members. They are important as they confirm the identity of those who practice them as a group or a society. These social practices can be performed in public or private or are closely linked to important events. These practices can be associated to mark the passing of the seasons, events in the agricultural calendar or the stages of a person's life. They can be practiced in small gatherings to large scale, social celebrations and commemorations. In some cases, access to rituals may be restricted to certain members of the community like initiation rites and burial ceremonies are two such examples. Some festive events are a key part of public life and are open to all members of society, carnivals and events to mark the new year, beginning of spring and end of the harvest are occasions common all over the world. Social practices, rituals and festive events involves various uh, forms like worship rites, rites of passage, birth, wedding and funeral rituals, traditional legal systems, traditional games and sports, settlement patterns, culinary traditions, seasonal ceremonies, practices specific to men or women only, hunting, fishing and many more. They also include a wide variety of expressions and physical elements, special gestures and words, recitations, songs or dances, etc. Now, uh, let us learn the, these practices for India. We will take examples of the fairs and festivals. Now, fairs and festivals in India are vibrant. There is both religious and secular sentiments attached to the festivals across India. The associated rituals with the festivals also make them unique. There are said to be more festivals in India than there are days of the year. Small local village rituals of worship and propitiation are celebrated with as much fervor as other big festivals. Sometimes fairs and festivals are moments of remembrance and commemoration of the birthdays and great deeds of gods, goddesses, heroes, gurus, prophets and saints. On these occasions, people gather together to celebrate. Each of India's many religious communities, Hindus, Muslims, Christians, Sikhs, Buddhists, Jains and others have such days. Major re religious cultural festivals of India are Makar Sakranti, Pesakhi, Diwali, Durga Puja, Dashera, Onam, Holi, Janmashtami, Mahashivratri, 
गणेश चतुर्थी गुरु नानक जयंती लोहड़ी ईद उल फित्र मोहर्रम रामनवमी क्रिसमस गुड फ्राइडे महावीर जयंती कुंभ मेला एक्सेट्रा एंड मैनी मोर फेस्टिवल्स अबाउट विच मेक्स इंडिया यूनिक द नेशनल फेस्टिवल्स आर गांधी जयंती इंडिपेंडेंस डे एंड रिपब्लिक डे लेट अस लर्न अबाउट द फेयर्स ऑफ इंडिया India is a destination of countless fairs which attract domestic and international tourists. Fairs are rich sources of tourist attractions because they display variety of local socio-cultural attractions for the tourist in the form of joy, entertainment, enthusiasm and spectacular events. Some of the major fairs of international repute which have been very successful in attracting large crowd of visitors every year are pushkar fair sonpur mela kumbh mela they not only add to fun and gaiety of any fair but also help in the economy of the country most of the fairs held in india are either religious fairs or celebration of change of seasons a number of big fairs are held at important places of pilgrimage kumbh mela is the largest religious gathering in the world which is held at four holy cities in india some of the big religious fairs in india are pushkar fair baneshwar fair ganga sagar fair tarnetar mela nagor fair and many monsoon festivals or fairs Kolkata Book Fair is the world's third largest annual conglomeration of books and world's largest Notre Dame Book Fair. The famous Sonpur Cattle Fair near Patna is the biggest cattle fair in Asia and the world's largest animal fair. Pushkar Fair this is one of the world's largest camel fairs held during October November. in the oldest city of rajasthan that is pushkar it attracts a large number of visitors from all around the world it is also an important competitions such as matka four and the longest mustache and the hot air balloon are experiences enjoyed by the tourist people also gather to watch camel racing tent pegging and other such events the sonpur fair is the only one of its kind in the world hathi bazaar is one of the major attractions of the fair where elephants are lined up for sale apart from this all breeds of buffaloes donkeys ponies birds are also available for sale ambu basi fair is the three day traditional fair which is organized every year during monsoon in the kamakhya temple at guwahati in assam Goa Carnival is another uh, fair not to be missed or carnival not to be missed in the month of December January and February the Goa Carnival is important fair uh, in which involves fun creativity music dance and good food uh, huge parades parades are organized throughout the state with bands dances floats strumming of guitars and non-stop festivity let us learn about the ritual arts of india the ritual art in india is located mostly within the confines of domestic ambience it is in fact an essential aspect of the celebrations in the family almost invariably the ritual art is practiced only by women and takes the form of drawings on the floor or on the walls of the house some of these drawings are a daily ritual such as the kolam of south india while others are made only on religious festive occasions these purely abstract drawings are known under different names in the different parts of the country mandnain rajasthan rangoli in gujarat mahara and maharashtra satyan saurashtra aripanor ayappanin bihar appanin the kumaon etc the ritual art is a tradition 
handed down from mother to daughter in succeeding generations. The drawings are without image, figure or narrative. The material used is mostly rice powder colored in different shades and believed to possess magical powers. Different from the traditional floor drawing, the drawings made on the walls of the houses have figurative character. They are colorful, rich in symbols and full of mythical elements. The Madhubani painting of Bihar is a fine specimen of this kind of figurative ritual art. Fourth, type of living culture, knowledge and practices concerning nature and the universe. It includes knowledge, know-how skills, practices and representations developed by communities by interacting with the natural environment. These ways of thinking about the universe are expressed through language, oral traditions, feelings of attachment towards a place, memories, spirituality and worldview. They also strongly influence values and beliefs and underlie many social practices and cultural traditions. They in turn are shaped by the natural environment and the community's wider world. This domain includes numerous areas such as traditional ecological wisdom, indigenous knowledge, knowledge about local fauna and flora, traditional healing systems, rituals, initiatory rites, cosmologies, etc. Traditional healers use different medicinal formulas from various natural substances like animals, minerals and vegetables. They have extensive knowledge on the use of plants and herbs for medicinal and nutritional purposes. In Kerala, there are many hereditary healers who specialized in specific illnesses such as poison therapy, children's disease, disease of the mind and bone setting and women who specialized in childbirth related therapies were an important part of traditional medical care. In Kerala, Mannan healers are traditionally known for their ability to cure children's diseases and are consulted by people from all layers of the society. Fifth category of living culture, traditional craftsmanship. Traditional craftsmanship is perhaps the most tangible manifestation of intangible cultural heritage. It is the skills and knowledge involved in craftsmanship is important and artisans need encouragement and support to continue to produce craft and to pass their skills and knowledge on to others, particularly within their own communities. There are numerous expressions of traditional craftsmanship, tools, clothing and jewelry, costumes and props for festivals and performing arts, storage containers, objects used for storage, transport and shelter, decorative art and ritual objects, musical instruments and household utensils and toys both for amusement and education. In this section let us learn about the handicrafts of India. Indian handicrafts represent perhaps the oldest tradition of living culture. The continuity of the traditional crafts still offers creative expression to the great mass of our people. The Indian craftsman uses his medium for rendering creative expression of his inner self. The main mediums in which the crafts are practiced are stone, wood and metal. Almost all clusters of villages have their own craftsmen who work on these mediums. The diversity of Indian cultural tradition is aptly reflected in the tradition of handicrafts. Some notable centers of handicraft production are in northern India, Kashmir is center for silverware, carpets, ivory items, paper mash, shawls. Punjab, 
is center for woodcraft metalware himachal pradesh is center for shawl and woodcraft uttar pradesh is famous for its silverware brocades pottery woodcraft embroidery when we talk about the eastern region west bengal is a center for terracotta woodcraft embroidery orissa is famous for its scroll printing woodcraft central india it is madhya pradesh which is famous for its stone craft embroidery in western india rajasthan it is a center for pottery stone craft gujarat it is woodwork embroidery in the southern region of india andhra pradesh is center for metalware stone craft karnataka is center for ivory items glaze pottery tamil nadu is center for matting puppets wood crafts and kerala is for its basketry masks and wood crafts let us learn about the textiles the textile tradition of india goes back beyond doubt to the second millennium bc the textual reference to cotton appears in the post vedic period though references to weaving also abound vedic literature the introduction of machine weaving fortunately did not result in the death of the very old tradition the textile tradition in the form of a craft has lived down to our own period and certainly maintains a continuity from its remote past we shall uh, discuss in brief some of the prominent textile forms existing in india even today one patola patolas the double ikat silk fabric mainly of gujarat origin it was a popular item of indian export around the 13th century the name patola seemingly derives from pattakula sanskrit meaning silk fabric the patterns of patola is precious silk sari were considered to be clear and reasonably permanent here the weaving is done so that the elements of pattern and color on the warp are made to juxtapose exactly with those of the weft so that the color combination and design sequence of the predetermined pattern are kept intact a slight irregularity in outline creates the flame effect which forms the essence of the beauty of patola some of the prominent textile forms in existence in india are patola katha jamdani bandhej learners let us sum up for this session heritage is not only manifested through tangible forms such as artifacts buildings or landscapes but also through intangible forms intangible heritage includes voices values traditions oral history popularly this is perceived through cuisine clothing forms of shelter traditional skills and technologies religious ceremonies performing arts storytelling the intangible cultural heritage nourishes cultural diversity and human creativity it is also an important tourism product it may also be noted that the heritage in any form is important to preserve for future generations so efforts should be to safeguard it thank you namaskar